Here I've got a nice little problem regarding the decomposition of a reciprocal of a prime number or something related to the reciprocal in terms of the sum of reciprocals of natural numbers. So let's look carefully at the statement. So we want to suppose that P is an odd prime. So that means it's any prime except for the number 2. And our goal is to show that 2 over P can be uniquely expressed in the form 1 over M plus 1 over N, where M is bigger than N, which is bigger than or equal to 1. Okay, so let's maybe get to it. So let's take this equation and switch it from e an equation that's happening in the rational numbers to an equation that's happening in the natural numbers. We can do that by clearing the denominators by multiplying by mnp. So notice multiplying by mnp will give us 2mn equals np plus mp. And now from here, we want to do a trick which I like a lot, and that's like complete the product. And this is like maybe in parallel to the notion of completing the square. So I can do that by moving this stuff over to the other side of the equation. I'll have 2mn minus np minus mp equals zero. And from here, I'll multiply this by the number two, and I'll do that because it's easier to work with this two times two equals four than two times one equals two. That's gonna build some symmetry into this problem. So multiplying by two gives us four mn minus two np minus two mp equals zero. Now, my next goal is to add something to both sides of this equation that complete that product. And you can see that if we add p squared to both sides of that equation, then we do complete the product in the left-hand side. So notice this left-hand side now factors as 2m minus p times 2n minus p. And this has got to be equal to p squared. But let's notice that since p is prime, p squared only factors two ways. It factors as 1 times p squared or p times p. Again, that's because p is prime. Okay, well let's notice that this p times p is not possible. Because by our condition down here that m is bigger than n, we know that this guy is bigger and this guy is smaller. Well, if m is bigger than n, then 2m minus p is bigger than 2n minus p. But that means they are non-equal, but if they are non-equal, then they can't represent this factorization p times p. So that tells us the factorization we need is one times p squared. But then again, since we know this one is bigger and this one is smaller, we know that 2m minus p equals p squared and 2n minus p is equal to one. Now, where can we go from there? Well, from here, we can see that 2m is equal to p times p plus one. So what did I do there? I just did some factorization after moving things over. That means that m is equal to p times p plus one all over two. And then similarly over here, we can see that n is equal to p plus one over two. So there we have our two expressions for m and n. Now, how do we know that this is unique? Well, we know that's unique because these are the only two factorizations of p squared over here. And we argued that this one, which is x'd out in orange, is not possible. Okay, well, let's maybe look at something in parallel to this, an example where our p is not a prime, it's a composite number, and how we do not get uniqueness in that case. So I'm going to just use p again. Let's set p equal to 15. Why 15? Well, that's the first odd composite number, so it's maybe like the easiest one to work with. Okay, well, everything's going to go pretty much the same until we get to this stage right here. So I'll just put dot, dot, dot. We get 2m minus 15 times 2n minus 15 is equal to 
15 squared. But now 15 squared has lots more factorizations than one times 15 squared and 15 times 15. So I'll express two of those factorizations. This is by no means all of them, but we can write this as one times 15 squared or as three squared times five squared. There we use the fact that 15 is equal to three times five. And both of those are possible, again, because we have the same setup where this guy is bigger and the other one is smaller. So let's see. This guy right here, I'll start in green and put the green star down here. That tells us that 2n minus 15 is equal to 1. And then 2m minus 15 is equal to 15 squared. Then what do we get? That means 2n is equal to 16 or n is equal to 8. This means 2m is equal to 15 times 16, but then m is equal to 15 times 8, so that means that m is equal to 120. So there we get a solution for m and n based off of this thing that's in a green star. I'll let you guys check that if you add 1 over n plus 1 over m, we indeed get 2 over 15, which is the goal. Now let's do this one, which I'll now star in blue bring that down here. So that'll give me 2n minus 15 is equal to 9 and 2m minus 15 is equal to 25. And that's pretty easy to solve. Notice we can move the 15 over. We'll get 2n is equal to 24 or n is equal to 12. And then here we'll get 2m is equal to 40. In other words, m is equal to 20. And those two solutions also work. So we proved uniqueness for the case when we have an odd prime. And then we gave a nice example where this is not possible in the case where we have an odd composite. In other words, the uniqueness is not possible. Now, maybe as a little bit of a homework question, post in the comments, why do we need P to be an odd prime? Why doesn't two work in this whole setup? And what would we have to tweak about this problem so that two could be included? And that's a good place to stop.